Dear UHD community, I'm Dawn McCarty, the Director of the Social Work Program. Welcome everyone to our 10th annual Person of the Year celebration. March is Social Work Month nationwide, so we are especially excited to share this event with you today. This year, our Person of the Year is Chris Hollins, former Harris County Clerk, Mr. Hollins led us through an unprecedented election in an unprecedented time. And we are honored to celebrate his success and his extraordinary contributions as a public servant to our community. In a moment, Dr. Smith will give a full introduction of our awardee. After a few remarks, Mr. Hollins will remain with us as well for a question and answer period. Again, welcome to this celebration. Happy Social Work Month and go Gators. Good afternoon. I'm Dr. Dana Smith, faculty member for the Social Work Program, and it's my distinct honor to introduce our awardee this afternoon. Mr. Christopher G. Hollins, an Super attorney and fourth generation Houstonian, is the former county clerk of Harris County, Texas. In private practice, he is the principal attorney at Holland's Law Group, PLLC. Chris resides in Houston's third ward with his wife, Morgan, and their children, Vivian and George. Chris developed a commitment to public service through the selfless example of his parents and their devotion for improving the lives of others. His father, George, served 34 years in the Houston Police Department and his mother, Christy, managed a career as an administrative assistant while raising Chris, his two sisters, and more than 20 young foster children. Chris has worked as a management consultant with McKinsey and Company. He has served in the White House Office of Presidential Personnel. He is an alum of New Leaders Council. He has served on numerous nonprofit boards, and he has been a big brother for over a decade. Chris holds a Bachelor of Arts in Political Science with Phi Beta Kappa honors from Morehouse College and dual graduate degrees in Law and Business from Yale Law School and Harvard Business School. In May of 2020, Chris was selected by Harris County Commissioners to serve as interim county clerk after the resignation of the previous clerk. Texas Monthly Magazine reported that prior to Holland's becoming county clerk, the March primary election was marred by six hour lines and computer glitches. They went on to say that Hollins, who had never held public office or overseen an election, hit the ground running, embracing an array of innovative ideas, including 24 hour voting, drive through voting, and ballot drop boxes. He recruited 11,000 poll workers to staff a record number of early voting locations, as well as election day polling places, and provided personal, excuse me, personal protective equipment for both election workers and voters. As the interim clerk, he faced several lawsuits, challenging many of his innovative plans to make voting accessible and safe for Harris County voters during the pandemic. He fought the lawsuits, doing his very best to protect voters and ensure their voices would be heard. In the end, as a result of his efforts, early voting reached a record high and overall voter turnout was higher than the state average. For demonstrating a true heart for Social Work's core values of service and social justice, through your hard work and dedication to protect our democracy, supporting and protecting voting rights, and creating safe and convenient access to voting during the COVID-19 pandemic. It is our distinct honor, on behalf of the students and faculty of the College of Public Service, the Social Work Program at the University of Houston downtown, to present this award during Social Work Month to you, Attorney Christopher G. Hollins, our 2020 Social Work Program Person of the Year. Congratulations. Hi, I'm John Schwartz, Dean of the College of Public Service, and it's my pleasure to give the 2020 Social Work Person of the Year Award to Chris Hollings. Congratulations. Thank you. 
Thank you so much to UHD's uh, social work program at the College of Public Service for awarding me with this distinguished honor, uh, Social Work Person of the Year for 2020. Uh, 2020 was a year that none of us will ever forget. And there are so many heroes, people who stepped up at times when Texas, when Harris County, and when Houston needed them most. And to be chosen from amongst that group to receive this award uh, is a true, true honor. Now, the goal of social work is to bring about social change and to have impact on communities, to empower people and the communities where they live. And there are so many ways to do that, and I know that UHD's graduates are pursuing a number of different avenues to bring about this kind of change. But for me, I can think of no better way to bring about social change and to empower communities than to protect and preserve and promote the right to vote in this country. And so, you know, when I became county clerk, we were and continue to be in the midst of this pandemic and safety was of utmost concern. However, you know, our democracy cannot suffer uh, because of the loss of life and the dangers that this virus presented. And so when I became county clerk, our number one goal was to ensure that the people of Harris County could cast their votes safely, but could also do so conveniently and with the peace of mind that their votes would be counted. Now, we didn't set out to make history. We simply wanted to make the polling places accessible to all of the 2.5 million registered voters across this county. And so innovations like drive-through voting, 24-hour voting, uh, the, the expansion to the right to vote by mail that we hope to promote uh, throughout the pandemic, these were done to increase that safety and increase that accessibility. And, you know, this wasn't just me. Uh, again, I'm honored to receive this award, but there were hundreds of employees of the county clerk's office who were on the front lines every single day last year. And we came down to election season in October and November of 2020. More than 10,000 of our neighbors stepped up to make sure that their neighbors could have their voices heard and could do so at the polls. And so again, I am so honored to receive this award. But our work does not stop here. Right now, during this very time, the innovations that we brought to Harris County to, to increase voter safety, to increase accessibility, uh, which you know, should serve as an example for other counties in Texas and other jurisdictions around this country, are being fought by folks in our state legislature who would seek to suppress votes. And so we had to stand against that. Drive-through voting, there's a bill in the House right now uh, and in the Senate to make drive-through voting illegal. There's a bill to make voting at nighttime illegal. There are bills to make it harder to vote by mail, to make it harder to vote across the board. And so we have to stand strong and continue to pursue these hard-fought battles that have been fought by generations of our ancestors to make sure that any citizen in this country can have their voice heard, can choose the next generation of leadership for their locality, for their state, and for this nation that's gonna affect them, their parents, and the lives of their children. And so I continue to take part in that fight. It's an honor to stand alongside each of you in that fight. And again, I wanna thank you so much for, for this award. I will truly cherish it, and I'll think about it as we continue um, to take on these hard fought but necessary battles. Thank you so much. Wonderful, thank you so much. Thank you so much, everyone. If we could just a round of applause where you are would be wonderful. <laughs> so thank you so much, Mr. Hollins, Chris Hollins for um, those words of encouragement for our students and for our entire community. We have some questions already from some students, so let's get started. We have about 15 minutes uh, with Mr. Holland, so um, this will be great. So along those lines, 
your sort of open invitation to continue the work. We've got some students already interested in what you are doing. You know, give us some direction to um, to you know what can be done moving forward with these challenges. Absolutely. Um, so, uh, you know, one thing for a registered voter uh, is to be, now that in itself is more difficult in Texas than it is to do anywhere else. Uh, but here in Harris County, there are opportunities to take virtual classes. Uh, to become a VDVR, a volunteer registrar, community to vote. That's extremely important. There are still millions of Texans who are not registered to vote, and that's the first step. That's your interest ticket to the polls. Um, but I talked about this legislation, and you know, even since the days when we take this just recently, that battle has continued to heat up. And uh, you know, folks in the legislature here in Austin are frankly trying to ram these voter suppression bills down our throats. They're trying to sneak them through uh, almost in the, the dark of night uh, and, and rush them through the process to, to try and get them passed and ultimately keep folks like us, uh, you know, certainly uh, urban communities and communities of color uh, from having easy access to the ballot. I mentioned a couple of those things, like, but they're even trying to do things like making it impossible for major counties like Harris County to put enough voting machines in the locations where they're needed. And again, they're trying to do that through nuances in the law that they hope folks don't catch. And so, you know, myself, so many great organizations um, like the, the, the current election administrator here in Harris County, like the Texas Civil Rights Project, like the ACLU, and many, many others, Move Texas, I could go on and on, uh, are going to be testifying to the dangers of these bills, are going to be trying communities, such as communities of faith and, uh, and the business community, to, to step up and support uh, the people of Texas. And, and, and again, in my mind, there's no better way to do that there's no other better way to secure rights for people than to allow them to secure their own rights through the ballot box. And so we have to fight these battles. You should be calling your state house representative. Uh, you should be calling your state senator. Uh, and you should be calling any organization, your church, your synagogue, your place of worship, um, and places where you do business and telling them that this is of the utmost importance to you. And that if they're trying to stand up for you, that they need to stand up against these dangerous voter suppression bills. Okay, excellent. So really a three-pronged attack, get involved with organizations who already have their, their, their um, feet on the ground in these, in these areas. There are many of them. Work on voter registration issues. Um, that's something um, important to the process and to be active yourself and the things that you can do as an individual call, um, talk to people, um, get, you know, make sure that the, the people that we've elected know what we, what's important to us. Okay. So a follow-up question to that is, can the federal government get involved and at what level would that happen? Would you see that coming? They absolutely can. And I, I believe I have a choppy signal. So I apologize for having to cut off my video. Uh, but there is already a bill in D.C. that the House has passed, H.R. 1. And the reason why it's H.R. 1 is because uh, Democrats in the House of Representatives have made it clear that this is their number one priority. It's a, it's a pro-democracy bill to protect voting rights. That bill has already passed the House uh, and is waiting for the Senate to take it up. Uh, and if you've been following that battle, the the major challenge to passing that bill that would protect us and, and prevent some of these dangerous voter suppression actions that are happening in states like Texas, which is already ranked 50th amongst all states in voting access, um, that's being held up by the filibuster. Although Democrats have a majority in the will to pass a bill like HR1, uh, the filibuster makes it such that you need 60 votes to pass uh, any law uh, through the U.S. Senate. 
And so there are some debates uh, happening among senators about how to you know, change Senate rules to weaken the filibuster. Uh, but that is quite a journey. Uh, and so similarly, in, in the same way that I mentioned you know, the importance of reaching out to your state representative or your state senator, you should be reaching out to your, your congressperson, uh, your U.S. senator. Of, of course, we don't have great ones on voting rights here in Texas. Ted Cruz has, has stepped up and made himself uh, you know, the poster child for voter suppression here in Texas. Uh, but, you know, frankly, it's the moderate senators who have control over whether or not the filibuster will continue, uh, who are going to have a lot of leverage here. Those are folks like Joe Manchin in West Virginia, Kirsten Sinema in Arizona, uh, and some other moderate Democrats and Republicans who have a lot of power and leverage in this situation. But, you know, we cannot, you know, frankly, and, and we're, gonna, we're not going to give up the battle here in Texas. But we cannot trust the current governor, uh, the current lieutenant governor, the current legislature as it's made up uh, to protect our rights. They have made it very, very clear that they are on the opposite side of that of that battle. And so we do need as much federal uh, support, whether it's H.R. 1, whether it's the John Lewis Voting Rights Act uh, that will protect voters, protect regular folks like you and me, uh, as we simply try to make our voices heard, to claim our seat at the table, and cast our ballots. Okay, lovely. So another question. So what does an ideal voting process look like? The ideal voting process uh, for me is where if you are a citizen of the United States, and if you are entitled to vote in a particular election, that that is extremely easy and straightforward for you, period. Um, that also needs to be secure. Uh, you know, we've seen actors like Russia uh, and other countries try to um, impose their will on United States elections and, and hack into our systems and so forth. So election integrity uh, is certainly important and making sure that the people who who vote are, are able to make sure that, you know, whoever they intend to vote for, that's who that vote gets cast for. Um, but, you know, frankly, this past election was the most secure in the history of the United States. And so, you know, we as a country are, are far along the path of election security, and I support that. Where we are failing, uh, and where states, particularly in the South, are intentionally failing and putting up roadblocks is on making voting easy. And so, you know, I think that you should be able to vote from the safety and convenience of your home. Anyone who wants to should be able to vote by mail. Uh, this is not a partisan issue, although some actors would try to make it sound like one. There are red states and blue states and purple states across the country who vote exclusively by mail, where no one votes in person. There are states across the country, in, in fact, there are 45 states of the 50 that allow anybody who wants to, to vote by mail, and Texas is not one of them. Um, and there's one reason for that, and that's to make voting more difficult, and that needs to be done away with. Uh, and then, of course, if you, if you choose to vote in person, that needs to be convenient as well. drive through voting was extremely popular here in Harris County, nearly one in 10 votes that were cast in Harris County in 2020 were through drive-throughs. And there were Republicans and Democrats and everybody in between who used that system and enjoyed it. Uh, and that needs to continue. Other counties need to pick that up and, and begin to offer that. And of course, Harris County needs to be able to continue to offer that in the future. And again, if you walk in, that needs to be safe uh, and secure and convenient for you as well. Voter registration does not need to be as difficult. We need online voter registration here in Texas. And we need something as close to same day voter registration uh, as possible. I saw something the other day which was extremely discouraging, which was that the, the terrorist who killed eight people in Georgia the other day was able to purchase his gun on the same day that he carried out those murders. And while that's legal in many places across this country, including Texas, you cannot register to vote and then cash your ballot on the same day. And that's simply absurd. And, and laws like that need to change to make voting 
for the citizens of this country simple and straightforward and safe. All right. So a couple of quick follow-up questions. What about voter ID? That seems to be a sticking point. And what's the process, progress on the mail-in voting rights? Uh, so voter ID, again, Texas has some of the most restrictive laws in the country. This is going to be a recurring theme if you haven't picked it up by now. Um, you know, one of the most egregious things about voter ID here in Texas is that your college ID, even if you go to a state institution like the University of Houston downtown, that state issued ID is not good enough to vote. Uh, but there's, there are other issued IDs like a gun license, as an example, that will count and allow you to vote. And look, I'm totally okay with your gun license that has your picture on it serving as an ID. But I also think that a college student should be able to use their state issued ID, period. And there's no reason why that's not the case, except because the legislature right now wants to make it harder for college students to be able to cast their ballots. Um, and, so, and so these laws need to be looked into as well. Now, there are plenty of, of, of reasons why someone might not have access to a photo ID and there need to be accommodations for, for those folks. The point of government, the point of democracy is not to serve your everyday person, it's to serve everyone. And so for those who are disadvantaged, who for whatever reason uh, cannot uh, access a, a photo ID, a state issued ID, there need to be alternatives to that that allow a person to prove their identity and ultimately cast their ballot. Um, and that's, you know, that is a complicated issue and the best way to deliver on that is you know reasonable minds disagree but what i don't think reasonable minds disagree on is that college students should be able to to vote simply and um and that those who have a photo id that is valid should be able to use it period uh there was also a question about about voting by mail again here in texas we have some of the most restrictive voting by mail laws uh, already and the current legislator seeks to make it worse. Uh, right now, you have to have a reason, an excuse to vote by mail, which includes being of, of old age, which includes being disabled. Uh, and there's a very unclear definition of what disabled means in the law. Uh, it includes being out of town. But uh, there's a law right now that would seek to, you know, if you say you have a disability, that you need a doctor's note that is notarized in order to prove up your disability. And what that's doing is essentially declaring a poll tax on disabled people because they have to pay to see a doctor and pay for a notary in order to vote. Um, again, unacceptable. And it's something that we should be fighting against with our whole hearts. Okay, since we just have a few more moments, of your time today. We, we have two, two questions we, we love to hear from you. And that one is, what are you most proud of as a public servant? And also what are your next, what are the next steps for you? We are interested in the people that we award the person of the year and become a part of our community. And we want to continue to follow and support you. Absolutely. Um... What I'm most proud of uh, is ultimately the number of people who were able to cast their ballots uh, in Harris County in 2020. And, and I was also so proud of people, again, on both sides of the aisle who stood up and took part in helping their neighbors to get to the polls. Uh, you know, the folks who worked in the county clerk's office, uh, you know, came from, from a multitude of political backgrounds. Uh, the folks who volunteered to serve as election clerks and judges were uh, also, again, of all political stripes. And that was great. The, the, the business community, folks like the Houston Rockets, uh, the, the nonprofit community, like the Houston Food Bank, so many houses of worship all the way across the spectrum, mosques and temples and so forth, stepping up to, to support democracy. That is what I'm most proud of because that's what our nation should be doing. Uh, and again, while, while being very discouraged uh, by what's happening with the efforts to, to weaken and dismantle our democracy, you know, I think folks proved here in Harris County in 2020 that the huge majority of us 
uh, want to see a fair fight and, and want to have their voices heard and want their neighbors, regardless of their political backgrounds, to have the same right. And so that was fantastic. Uh, for me going forward, you know, as you mentioned a moment ago in the introduction, uh, I am a practicing attorney. I, I have returned now to my practice and, and, you know, sort of getting back into the swing of things there. Uh, but this, this fight for, for basic elements of our democracy is not going away anytime soon. And so a, a huge uh, chunk of, of my time and effort and energy right now is, is going into that. Um, you know, probably much more than my, my wife would like uh, because she'd like me to be focusing on, on the family and on uh, what's going on to, to pay the mortgage. But, uh, but this is so important. And so, you know, later this week, I'll be in Austin to, to testify. And this won't be my first trip. Uh, I'll be doing everything that I can to, you know, to put the right kind of pressure uh, on our legislators, both in Austin and in Washington, that will, will lead to the, the protection and the preservation of our democracy. And, and until that fight is won, that's where my head and my heart will be. Well, thank you so much. Thank you to Chris Hollins. Thank you so much for, for this presentation, for spending time with our students. There are a few questions left, which I'll save students and we'll see if we can't get Mr. Hollins to answer them for us a little bit later. There, we're so proud of you. We're so proud of the work that you do and of the example that you provide and demonstrate for our students on the importance of public service and, um, and what can be done. And so thank you so much. Thank you everyone for attending and thank you for, for this um, wonderful event during Social Work Month to the University of Houston downtown for supporting us. And um, we hope to see you soon. Thank you all again for, for honoring me with this distinguished award and, and go Gators. I'll see y'all soon. <laughs>